Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson one of the platform specific series of my TIE 99 assembly programming tutorials. Now, we're going to be going through the TIE 99, a few simple things that you're going to want to do if you're creating games or little programs on it. Now, each one's going to discuss a different topic, and we're going to look at how to do things with the hardware. And I say the hardware because I don't use the firmware, I don't use BASIC or anything to get things working for me. I try and go to the hardware where possible. Now, today we're going to be looking at graphics. We're going to get some simple bitmaps onto the screen. You can see here we've got this little Chibico bitmap, which is my mascot, and we're going to show it on the screen. We're going to discuss how to do that. But the first thing I want to sort of bring to your attention, which surprised me, and you might not know this, the TIE 99 graphics chip is the same one as in the MSX1. So if you have a look around for MSX1, technical resources relating to the registers of the hardware and how to use the graphics hardware, to my knowledge, you can do it all on the TIE 99 as well, which made my job a lot easier because I was basically able to convert my MSX1 example into a TIE 99 example and that's what we're going to see today. So first of all let's go over to the code and let's see today's example running. Okay so we're going to run TIE bitmap advanced here. If I just fire this up here, here's it loading up and if I just press, F2, press 2 here you can see here we've got a Chibico character. Now it might not be entirely clear but the different lines are different colours. We've not just drawn a black and white bitmap, we've actually coloured it in a bit, only very simply but we have coloured it in. We'll discuss that in a little while. So that's the advanced example because it's made up of multiple tiles. We're in a tile mode here, I'll discuss what that means in a moment. And here's the alternate example which is just a single tile and it's a smiley face and you can see the smiley face has got a green smile and it's got a yellow body and a black background and we'll discuss that as well later. So those are two examples we're going to look at today. They're basically the same concept though. Now let's just go back over to the um, technical details first and we're going to discuss the memory map of the video RAM. Now the video RAM of the TIE 99 is separate from the main memory. The main memory just has 256 bytes and there's some ports that we can write to to select video addresses and then we can transfer data into VRAM and we can actually pull it out as well if we want, though we don't need to in this example. Now the mode we're going to be using today is a tile based mode. That means that each 8x8 square of the screen is set to point to a pattern and that pattern defines which image is going to be shown in that tile. Now each pattern is 8 pixels wide and 8 pixels tall and that's in black and white information but there is also a colour attribute for each line of the tile. Now this has a foreground colour and a background colour and that is a choice of 16 different colours. Well nearly 16 because there's two blacks here. So this is the colour palette available to us. So there is two nibbles making up each colour and they select the foreground and the background. Now the black and white information for the settings we've got today will go from memory address 0 to 7FF. The colour information will go from 2000 to 27FF. So that's where we define our patterns and our colours for our patterns. Now when we actually want to set a tile visible on the screen we use memory address 1800 onwards and that will define our 32 tile wide and 24 tile tall tile map or at least that's how big it is visibly. Now let's go back over to our code and let's have another look at it and we'll discuss what we're doing today. Okay, so let's just fire example up again. Now our Chibico character is 48 pixels wide and 48 pixels tall. Now we've got to split this up into tiles and each tile is 8 by 8 pixels. So effectively this is 6 tiles wide and 6 tiles tall. And what we've done is we've defined these tiles and then we're redrawing them into a square area of the screen and we've got a little piece of code that will do that for us. Now the first tile is tile 128, uh, we've programmed that in and we're then filling this area here and then we're filling an area with those tiles to make the image appear as we want it. Now we're going to go over the code today and we're going to discuss what each section does and how this sort of builds up to make the graphical example. The first thing we've got to do is we've got to set up our graphic screen. Now the default screen isn't the one we're using today, the one that starts up on boot up. We're actually switching to a graphics mode that uses a tile map and we need to send some settings to the registers to do this. Now when we want to transfer data to a, the control port of the VDP we send to 8CO2, that's the memory mapped port for the VDP control port and the bytes we send to this address will be processed by the graphics chip. So what bytes are we sending? Well first of all we're sending pairs of bytes. This byte here, the first byte, is a value and the second byte is a register number. Now register numbers always start 128. 
So 128 plus 0 is register 0. 128 plus 7 is register 7. And so these are the values we're giving each of these registers. We're basically defining the screen mode, which is the tile mode we're using today, and the memory addresses of the sprite data and the pattern data and things like that, which you're not really going to want to change. These should be pretty good as a sort of starting example um, template settings for you for today's example. And so what we're doing here is we're transferring all the bytes from that initialization routine here into the VDP control port here. And we're just repeating until we sent them all and that turns on the screen. So that's the first thing. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to transfer our image. Now, our Chibico character is in this bitmap file here. We've loaded in. Now, if you want to create a bitmap file, you can use my Aku Sprite Editor. Here it is. This is the program I use for all of my tutorials. And if we just load in bitmap test here, if I just find it, I'm not planned very well for today, as you can see, because my file isn't already loaded. Here we go, here's bitmap test. So this is the example bitmap. Now, obviously it's only in two color mode here, if I just select this here. So this is what I've exported today. And if we go to the TMS 9900 menu, TIE99, we've got a save or bitmap option, and that will export in the black and white format for today's example. Now the colors I've defined separately. I, uh, you can export colors, but I've not done that. I've just defined them independently here. Now each tile will use eight bytes, and so that's one tile, and each line is six tiles. So this is the first strip of the image, and that's the second strip here. Now, if we just change a color here, for example, let's um, play around and let's change this to cyan, line two here. Now, if I just compile that, oh, I didn't pick a very good one there. Let's move it along a bit. Now you can see we've changed one of the tiles to the cyan color here. If I change this line and I change this to a B and I run again, well, maybe it's not quite clear, but maybe you can see that the bottom line there has changed to yellow. Now, basically the point I'm making is each of these bytes is one line of that tile. What I can also do is if I change this byte here to an, let's say a three, which is a green and I run again, that would have changed the background color of that strip of the tile. And now you can see this line here, the background has gone from black to green. The point I'm making is that for each tile, there are eight bytes of color information and the top nibble is the foreground color and the bottom nibble is the background color. And if you need to check the color information, it's matching this information just here. Okay. So we're defining our black and white data in this imported file. We're defining our color information in this defined byte section just here. I'll just get it back to normal. There we go. So this is the colors for each of the strips and each line is a separate tile. Now we've got this information here, but we need to transfer it to VRAM. And we're doing that with this fake OTIR command. OTIR is a command that exists on the Z80 and I've come to mimic it here. Now we're selecting a video RAM address here. Now the base for the black and white data is VRAM address zero, and the base for the color information is VRAM address 2000 in hexadecimal. But we're going to change tile 128. We're not gonna change zero to 127 because I reserve those for my font. 128, we need to multiply by eight because there's eight lines per tile. And so the result of this will be the black and white data for tile number 128. And the result of this will be the color data for tile number 128. And we're transferring the data to that with OTIR. Let's take a look at OTIR. Here it is. All we're doing is we're transferring each byte to port 8C00, which is the data port of the VDP. So that's where the VDP receives data that we want to write into VRAM. But how do we select where we want that to go? Well, we've got a function here called set write address. Now, if we set R0 to be the address we want to write to, for example, memory address 2000 here, then we need to do a few things to actually get that selected as a writing port. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to set bit six of the address to a, a one, which effectively is the equivalent of adding or oring in hexadecimal 4000 here. If we didn't do that, we would select the port to be a read port. So we'd be reading from VRAM and we want to write to VRAM. So we're always oring in 4000 here to set a write address. 
Now we need to set the low byte first, the bottom bytes. So we're swapping the two bytes of R0 over, sending the byte, swapping them back, and then sending the high byte. And we're sending those to 8CO2. That's the port for selecting the VRAM address. And then we send the data to 8C00 here. Now, of course, 8C02 is the same address which we used for our initialization here. Now, you might notice that when we initialized, we had to add 128 bit 7, and now we're having to add 64 bit 6 here. And so you can see that the, the bit of that second byte is defining what the function of that is. So that's how we're doing that. But basically, you don't need to worry about that. You can use this set write address to just select a VRAM address. So this is transferring all the bytes of our graphics. So our graphics are now within the um, pattern definitions, but the image isn't visible on screen. And I can prove that to you. If I just put a jumps dollar symbol in here, immediately after we've defined the bitmap data, well, when I run this, oh dear, no image. And that's because the patterns are defined in RAM, but they're not visible on the screen. Now, if we just go back to the documentation here, now I'm defining the Chibi Co character from tile 128. And because it's 48 by 48, we're having to split it up into six tiles wide and six tiles tall. And so these are automatically exported by my Sprite editor to be consecutive tile numbers. And then we're going to define the visible tiles on the screen to be the matching tile numbers. So the first tile is 128, then 129, 30, 31, 32, 33 across the screen. And then we jump back tile 134 and onwards, and that will get the Chibico character onto the screen. And we have a function for that. It's called fill area with tiles. Now we're loading the tile number into the top byte of R7. That's the starting tile number. We're loading R6 with the height, R5 with the width, and R3 and R4 with the X and Y position. And fill area with tiles is going to do all the dirty work for us. So what does it do? Well, first of all, we calculate and select the VRAM address of the start of a line, and then we're transferring tile numbers into VRAM and incrementing them consecutively. And we're writing new data to VRAM with port 8C00 here. So that will transfer one tile number to a visible tile on the screen. And each tile is just a single byte. It's the number of the pattern that we're showing in that position. So we would write 128 the first time, 129, because we're incrementing, 130, and so on. So this is writing consecutive tile numbers to the visible screen. So effectively, it's this get BDP screen pause that's doing the dirty work of selecting the video RAM address calculated from an XY position. It's quite easy to do that, fortunately. The tile map is 32 tiles wide. So each Y coordinate, we need to multiply by 32. And we're doing that by bit shifting to the left five times. We then add the X position and we add the base of the visible tile map. Now that's at 1800 in hexadecimal. That's just here. This is where the tile map starts as we've defined it. Okay, so that will calculate the VRAM address for the tile that we want to change. We're then using the set write address, adding that hexadecimal 4000 to set bit 6, defining that it's a writing address, otherwise it would be a reading address. And we're selecting that address with 8CO2 here, and that will select it. And then the bytes we write will be to that X position, and each consecutive byte will auto increment along in VRAM effectively across the screen. And that's how we get our Chibico character to the screen pretty straightforward really. Now that's the more advanced example with the big graphic, but there's also this simple example, which is just a basic smiley. Now you can just about make out that there's a smiley face here and you can see the mouth is zeros. And then we've got the colors here. And if you look, I've actually changed the background color to this C here, which is a sort of green, I believe. That's a dark green. And that is making the smile of the smiley a green color. So we've got uh, two simple examples here for getting graphics to the screen. And that's really all there is to today's example. So there we go. Now we've got a simple graphic onto the screen here. Um, hopefully this would be a nice starting point for you to make your own little game or a program. I've actually got an example program that we'll look at later that gets a smiley on the screen and then you can move it around with the joystick. So you can you know, get started on making a little game if you so desire. Anyway, that's all we're going to be covering today. I hope you've found this interesting. If you have, you know, please like and subscribe. If you like the videos, YouTube might recommend them to more people because that's how YouTube works. And if you subscribe, well, it just increases my motivation to keep spending all my time trying to make more tutorials for more and more systems. But anyway, whatever you do, I hope you enjoy the Time 99 and your programming challenges. 
Thanks for watching today and goodbye.